of Education meeting of August 8th to order, and may we rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> We'll start with communications and recognitions. Do we have an end of the table who would like to start? Do you have anything? Okay. I'd just very quickly, I'd like to uh, recognize our maintenance staff, our custodian staff, and our tech staff. Um, they've been hustling, the, not the right word. It's, they've been working very, very hard under Peter's direction and, and Chris. Uh, it's they've been moving teachers boxes supplies furniture uh, hooking up the phones and computers um, and I know Tim's going to go into the detail at the at the middle school but they have worked incredibly hard and deserve a, a special thank you so Peter please from all of us just give them an extra thanks and Chris you too mm. thank you um, I would like to Ad, uh, Farouk and Deb and I read, um, Candace was not able to slide into the slots they had available for her, but we read at the first readathon for the library, and that was a lot of fun, and we hope to do it again. We don't know how much money they raised yet, do we, Farouk? I don't know the final tally. I, last time I spoke to the library, it was uh, about $1,800. Okay, good. Thank you. It was fun. Uh, I also wanted to add, I don't know if anybody follows um, Tim Flanagan. He's a middle school teacher. He writes a blog and he participates in um, the teacher funds that they get the stipends for. And he participates, he has this blog for Alternate Route. He's the one who did the Fulbright um, sabbatical uh, a couple of years ago and right this summer so far he has gone to duke university for a conference he is, was in new york city and he's now in mexico and a lot of this has to do with diversity and educating with the arts and diversity and all that so it's really interesting if you need a link to his blog i'm happy to provide that to you it's been fun to to follow him Uh, next is comments from citizens. We'll move on to the middle school consolidation report. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> my, but my walk up song is. Uh, <laughs> Okay, um, before I get started, just to uh, add on uh, to Alexis' comment about uh, Mr. Flanagan, uh, he's one of our uh, well-traveled middle school teachers. Uh, I think the greatest thing about Tim is in his travels, he taught himself how to be an expert photography. The photography that goes along with his blog, The Alternate Route, is just absolutely stunning. The pictures from his sabbatical in Vietnam were, were just mind-blowing and uh, we've parlayed that and he's gonna you know be teaching a photography course uh, as one of the encores for us so we're, we're I, I think that was one of his purposes of his Cuban trip if I remember right correct yep okay so this should be the last middle school update because by the time we meet again Stonington Middle School will be open Okay, so uh, under the heading of communications, uh, we're scheduled for our new student orientations on the 21st for grade six and uh, on August 23rd for seventh and eighth graders. These activities uh, were planned and will be executed uh, in conjunction with the Stonington High School link crew that does the ninth grade orientation. Uh, Anne-Marie Houle and Pat McCarney have done a great job of using since they already had to train those kids to do the high school they're on loan to us uh, and we're very excited uh, for that student orientation for all students um, 
coming to Stonington Middle School on the 3rd. Uh, the assistant principals met with the PTO uh, today to start planning kind of a parent preview. Uh, parents are very interested in getting into the school before opening day. Uh, then we'll finish the details on that and get that out to folks. Um, information on class placements and teachers is starting to go out to parents this week. The eighth grade math placement has already been communicated to parents. Uh, a draft of the proposed bus routes uh, have already been communicated and feedback was collected and we're turning that all over and processing that. Um, the new official website is up. It still needs some work, but we're up and running with that. Um, so thanks to Chris and his guys for getting that uh, on board. And also, we have uh, school branded uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts that have been posting uh, in the last few weeks and will continue. Those will be the school accounts going forward. They're linked at the bottom of the website. And personnel update. We, this, year, this spring, we hired a total of six new teachers for Stonington Middle School. Three math teachers, and we're really excited about these math teachers. They all come to us with really great experience, uh, and we really believe that they will uh, help us drive our math program forward. We're very excited about all of our new hires, but our math hires uh, especially. Uh, our eighth grade uh, language arts teacher is someone returning to the district. Christina Beckett taught here at the high school for four years, uh, a few years ago, and is back from Hawaii. So we're glad to welcome her back to the district. Uh, our new so seventh grade social studies teacher, Mr. Walters, was the long-term sub last year in eighth grade. He's joining us permanently. We have a new uh, second art teacher, Mrs. Gallo from Pawgatuck, is coming over. But to run all of the art classes for students, we needed a second art teacher. So we've hired uh, a new art teacher, uh, Ms. Jessie Stantavage, who will be starting with us. And we're still finalizing. Uh, we need a long-term sub in eighth grade science because uh, Mrs. Faraci had a baby a couple of weeks ago, and she'd like to stay home with that baby for a few weeks at the beginning of the school year. So we're, that's the only loose end that we're still tying up, and we'll have that tied up this week. Update on technology. Uh, again, I want to reiterate uh, what Dr. Riley said uh, about how hard people have been working. Uh, including the technology staff. Um, the interactive whiteboards are being installed. Uh, Steve's been working on that on a daily basis um, in all of the core academic classrooms, including world language. Uh, we'll have all of the teacher voice amplification systems moved from the vacant classrooms in Pawgatuck, so we'll have them, in addition to the ones that are already installed to Mystic, we should have a teacher sound amplification pro. Uh, system in every core academic classroom. Uh, as you can see in one of the pictures, they're getting ready for the fall's Chromebook distribution. Uh, and we're still working on the installation of the new security cameras similar to what they have at the elementary school level. I'm going to give you a quick rundown on the facilities. And again, there's going to be a little bit of a repeat because uh, I think later in tonight's program, Mr. Anderson is going to present kind of a district-wide view, and a lot of what happened district-wide happened at the middle school. So some repeat, but it bears repeating. And again, I couldn't agree with Dr. Riley more. The job that, that, that Peter and his staff has done getting us at the middle school re ready has been invaluable. Um, it really has been very impressive. So just a quick list of things at Stonington Middle School that have either already been completed or virtually complete. Um, We've done a complete gym remodel. Uh, we're almost at the point where we're going to put the bleachers back and finish it up. That's about the only thing left to be done is the wall pads on either end and putting the bleachers back. All hallways have been repainted. All hallway doors and door frames have been repainted in the new school colors, blue and gold. The cafeteria was completely repainted. We're anticipating the receipt of all new cafeteria seating uh, by the middle of next week. We had to create some new spaces in the school uh, by dividing some rooms into two separate spaces. Our school-based health center uh, was one of those things right across the hall from the nurse's office. 
that uh, continues to move along and will be complete for the opening of school. Downstairs uh, on the, the ground level, uh, we took a, a large classroom that was not used very much in the past at Mystic, divided it into two full-size classrooms for world language with French on one side and Spanish on the other. Uh, we have uh, a couple of donations. We have a new water bottle filling station, similar to the one they have here at the high school that was donated from the Mystic eighth grade class that had some money left over from their eighth grade party and purchased that. So that's gonna be installed, retrofitted around one of the drinking fountains in the hallway. Uh, it's in, it just hasn't been installed yet. Uh, both PTOs from Apocatuck Middle School and Mystic Middle School contributed to buy a new trophy case for the front lobby that is more substantial and modern looking and really nice. Uh, one of the things uh, that Peter and his guys have been working on is on the grounds. Uh, there were a number of trees that were close to the building and, had, and around the back in the science and at the front of the building that had been allowed to overgrow and a lot of it had actually grown over the roof and was causing uh, with the leaves and whatnot some of, the, of our roof problems with uh, the dr roof not draining right because of so much leaf and debris. So we've, we've cleared a lot of that stuff out uh, and gotten all of the growth around the building. Landscaping to kind of clean up the front entrance of the school will start uh, Wednesday next week. Uh, we also, as Peter will go into, we have, uh, we're still waiting on our new sign installation both at the street sign and on top of the building, but that should happen shortly. So if you'll indulge me for just two more minutes, I know I don't like to go too long on this, but I have a quick little video for you that I actually have to go over there and click on. And so that gives you a look at the process of the total transformation of the gym. Um, <laughs> it really came out super nice. All right, questions, comments? Uh, I have a question about, you had mentioned, or I read somewhere that there would be a new process for bus drop off. Correct. Um, how will that work that it will be so much better than it has been in the past? I love your optimism. Um, <laughs> we're working out some details. Uh, right now, we've got the parking lot being resurfaced and repainted uh, with the lines. What we want to do is move all of the bus traffic, the way the, the parking lot was originally signed and intended to be used, all buff, bus traffic up top at the school and all parent drop off in that middle circle to the science door and we'll staff that science door for AM drop off okay. so that we can keep two separate things. And in the afternoon, we'll actually allow the parents to pick up and go mm -hmm. in that circle until t while the buses load because they'll be on the other end of sure. the parking lot. And then we'll just stop that line of traffic while the buses, when they're all ready to roll, the buses will roll, we'll stop the parent pickup and then resume it. So we think that will clear up a lot of the problem. Thank you. Mr. Morehouse, you had a question. It was perhaps the most frustrating part of being a parent in Mystic Middle School was, yes. was <laughs> picking up your child at the end of the I've day. I've heard the, that. The, yeah. line, the line was down, down the hill mm -hmm. approaching Hewitt Road sometimes. Yeah. So if yeah. 
sounds like you're figuring it out. Well, but one of the things that we're, we still have to get some, uh, some blessings uh, from public safety is that we, we have room in between the lines of parked cars in the staff parking lot to actually run two lines of cars and then be able to pull them up and do pickup. There's a sidewalk from that science exit all the way down to Miss Tuxet, and we'll start the first pickup right there uh -huh. so that we can you know, kind of alleviate that. And to me, to be able to allow those first parents in line and hopefully a good portion of them to keep rolling up and it will yeah. keep students from having to cross into the parking lot like mm -hmm. they have been either to get to cars or buses. They, they come out the science wing and they stay on the sidewalk um, and then just hold the cars for a couple of minutes while the buses roll. So I'm hoping it will be better. And then uh, another question is, um, do all the teachers have their own classroom or are they having to share? Most of the teachers, there's a couple of special ed, special programs that are sharing some spaces. All of the core content and world language teachers have their own classroom. The one caveat on that, Mr. Morehouse, is that there are some classrooms that will be in use during one of their plan periods. But as far as, you know, they're teaching in their own room, all the, all the core content and world language teachers have that. Thank you. All right. Thank you All right. very much, Mr. Smith. All right. Uh, next on the agenda is the consent agenda. I need a motion to approve. I move we accept the uh, consent agenda as uh, submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Next, we have the second read uh, for approval, the curriculums. Now, for those, do we need to do those each one at a time, not as a group, correct? If we're going to approve. The group is fine. OK. Um, do we have any other questions um, on those curriculums? Yes. I, I just had one question on the um, music technology. Maybe I didn't see it. I'm looking through, but I didn't notice anything learning to create electronic music, is that, or maybe that's probably a different class. Marianne, are you able to answer that, or Mark? I didn't hear, I didn't hear the last part of the technology. Creating electronic music, or, or a synthesizer, or apps, or things like that, is that perhaps a different it, it, it uses class? The, yes, it uses the GarageBand program, and you can import keyboard music that they have attached to the computers, or you can download and incorporate any sounds that they can that they can find on the internet and create more electronic beat type stuff. Okay. Were there other questions on the curriculum? If, if not, and if it is fine, then we need a motion to approve the curriculum. If we want more information, then we need to request that as well. We can do it together. I approve the three curriculums listed high school with music technology. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right, so moved. We're all approved of the three curriculums as listed. Next on the agenda is the report of the superintendent of schools. Yes, um, you will hear about the middle school, um, and Peter will be making a presentation in a moment. But I would like to, uh, again, thank our maintenance and custodial staff and technology staff the AAA program, that's Allison's amazing annex. Um, they moved, they're out of the central office and you know, they, that room has been painted and the files are done. It's just a beautiful, beautiful office area. And they're, all the classrooms are now ready to, to be, and they'll be set up in the next couple of weeks. And it's really, really quite amazing what, 
what's happened there. So thanks to everyone for that. And certainly if any board member would like to uh, come take a look at that, give me a call and be happy to give you a tour. Um, I would like to mention um, last night at the Board of Finance, the middle school roof was approved for us to move forward with that. That roof uh, at Stonington Middle School is old and it was really nice to hear that the Board of Finance supports us moving forward with the planning. Um, they're also uh, allowing us to include the air conditioning, the future air conditioning uh, curbs and things that will be needed for that. So uh, Peter will be working with the architect to have all those plans done and approved at the latest, I think, with November. So then we can go to bid in the spring and have it uh, have a brand new roof on the school next summer. Um, Tim mentioned the new art teacher. The last two teachers uh, are on. You just approved uh, um, the personnel report. We're very pleased with the art teacher and our new elementary instrumental music teacher. Uh, we had to go through a few applicants on that, but we have an amazing person, and we're looking forward to to having that new program in our elementary schools. And let's see if there was that one other thing about. Oh, um, the the Board of Finance also um, last night said that they will be returning one hundred and forty five thousand dollars to the district based, based on the ECS formula. So um, what we'll do there is uh, our administrators, Gary and I and the others, will will look at the best, that, that, that's a general fund, uh, return of funds, and how best uh, we could use those funds. We'll bring that to our finance committee at the next meeting and then bring it back to the board as to how those funds should be placed in our operating budget. And now I'd like to turn this over to Peter, who will discuss some of the projects that we have going. Thank you. Good evening. What we've got is a, uh, let me get this up. We've got a um, really kind of brief synopsis of what we've done all, all summer long. The three pictures that you're looking at here are, um, this is the, obviously the Stingrays is the new floor in the, in the, in the Mr. Middle School. Over here is Dean's. Dean's Mill uh, flooring, and, and here's De Dean's Mill. We also, um, we also have a new finish that you're going to see here in a minute. Hopefully, it comes through well on the slides. This is the new uh, outside sign for the uh, Stonington Middle School. It's the top one. Uh, we're, it, we've, we were able to salvage uh, the middle school, and we were able to replicate as close as we could with new uh, cast aluminum letters, the Stonington sign, and we have the Stingray up there as the balance. Uh, it's not a prison, but it, but it is a school. Um, this is the uh, this is the new health center. It doesn't look like this now. Right now, the doors and sheetrock are on. Uh, we're we're ready. To, it's just a matter of uh, paint and a few little trim pieces, and we're ready to open that building up right there, or that that room up. This is one of my favorite projects. This was the uh, the drainage issue that was at Mystic Middle School, or my Stonington Middle School. We went down, I don't know if you can see this gentleman's hard hat here. We were scheduled to go down only five feet and it was only supposed to be in the parking lot. The contractor felt it would be a better job if you went up the hill, we're down eight feet and we went 125 feet with a curtain drain. We've been flowing water out of that hill since it was completed and we're putting out about 2,200 gallons every day. <laughs> it's been nonstop. So Where there- it's going, it's, uh, it, we, we, we had them core it right into the catch basin, so it's going the catch basin, so it's just groundwater going in the catch basin and it's on its way. But it's, it's absolutely- water in my basement. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's incredible how much water we hit and uh, it's, it's all on its way out, so that's a good thing. Uh, this is the new gym, all three different uh, pictures of it. You can see we did a two-tone design there's the uh, Stingray in the center and the Stingray logo. This, is a, this really came out great. The two-tone design was a, was a really good option that we got onto. Here's Dean's Mill School. We are, this is the front of the building. I don't know if you've known that we did get the sign up and, and on, so there's the proof that it's there. Here's a Dean's Mill School. This is a new finish that we're using on the floor, and we have that at both Dean's Mill and West Vine. And our code red buttons are all done and ready to go. Hopefully, we never have to use them. This is 
the, another shot of the, of, the, of the luster of the floor, you can see that this is a three coat finish. Um, we, it, the, there's so many solids in this finish that we don't have to do the normal four coats. We actually save a coat. This is a finish specifically designed for schools. This is a view from the roof today at the, the new front end of Dean's Mill where all the turnarounds out. If you can look, you can see actually all the sidewalks are being in. There's sidewalks here, here, and that one right there is fresh. So that one was just poured. This is the new admin furniture in the front section of the, of the Dean's Mill office. We're, we're almost there. Here's the, uh, these are, this is the new uh, safety gate or rail to prevent kids from shooting across to, to the other side of the parking lot where the buses will be coming in. So this is a, a nice added safety feature for the back of Dean's Mill. Our guys have done a really, really nice job. This is, one of, this is a typical classroom right now at Dean's Mill. Uh, the, these are all up and ready. We're, we're ready for kids right now, and we've been ready for a while. They've done a phenomenal job. West Vine, that's today. Nice shot. Here's a good, good example of the new finish that we're also using on the, on the floors. Over here is West Vine, and this one is Dean's Mill. And if, for those of you that may have been involved with this, some of this decision, that is the second floor uh, renovated B wing where we had the green paint and if you notice we've got the color change that's our beige paint up there here's what a couple days can do you can see all the rain from where we were at the bus circle here and this is all paved out this was today and this is the back area going back to the playground behind West Vine Street and this is the learning annex if you haven't seen it it's really quite a nice, nice? thing yeah. uh, we've We've converted this entire library into a functional office and learning area. It's, it's really sharp. And this was all, this was all done in-house. We had nothing, no one has, everybody that was involved with this was Stonington staff. And that's it. Wow. Peter, I don't know if you had any idea what you were in for when we hired you last year, but you have been very busy. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all your efforts. Um, and I don't know also if maybe we want to extend an invitation to our Board of Finance members for a tour of the Learning Annex because that was something that they really thought long and hard about um, uh, us following up through our procuring, so I think maybe that would be a nice gesture for them. Okay, that's fine. We'll keep it on our radar, though. Thank you. I have a question for Peter. Yes. Uh, Peter, the drain uh, at Stonington Middle School, yep. is there a maintenance program scheduled for it? For the drain? Yeah. Actually, the contractor included a clean out. It's at the top of the hill, so we have access on both ends of the drain. Excellent. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Peter? Thank you so much. The pictures were wonderful. Uh, next monthly reports, does anybody have any questions? Yes. I have uh, one question. Before I ask Chris on that, how many more years do we have left to uh, pay down? Let us get back to you with that because you know, we've been putting at least 60000 a year. Some years we were at 150000 This last year when we had all the retirees, that could have taken a big chunk out, but Gary took the, the payoff for those folks out of the last year's ending balance. So that was something that would have been an, a, a, a liability, and that's down. So we'll, we'll get that back to you. I just wanted to tell you I love your reports. They're so simple to read, and there's clearly a ton going on. Even six months ago, there's always something. But it's they're very helpful. They're very good. Thanks. On to the committee reports. Uh, does anyone have any? Um, 
details to add for the Finance and Facilities Subcommittee meeting? I do have an update on the Health Insurance uh, Reserve Fund Committee. We've met twice since our last meeting here. Uh, significant progress has been made. We're actually very, very excited. Our meeting, I'm losing track of my days, yesterday or the day before, um, was uh, only 45 minutes long and it was very efficient. Um, we were able to um, come together on some details. We have uh, Gary and Jim Sullivan and Vince Paselli are working to finalize some of those financial details for us. Um, and then we can review that MOU in the subcommittee. And then we'll be able to bring that forward to um, our boards. And then uh, we're looking forward to meeting our three boards together to then finalize um, that um, agreement. I do have just a little bit of details just to give you some highlights from that. Um, I had met with um, George Sylvester, who was the person who originated the um, details of that original agreement and also worked in the town for, for a very long time. It helped give some insight on um, how they could have bankrupted the um, the fund back in 95 and the cause for some extreme concern by many members like the Board of Finance um, and basically they weren't funding it. They weren't putting that 120% plus the 5% into the fund. So if you do that, you're going to run out of money. So, um, And the agreement as much as we've looked at it and there can be a little misinterpreted because it seemed like it was vague. Uh, as George explained, that agreement took about two years to get put together and he would bring it to all the boards and by the time they were done with it, had really watered it down. Um, so we use that as a great um, stepping off point and then all agree that we need the details in there so that when we are all not here anymore, everybody knows the intention of the agreement, the intention of um, funding and um, all, all the details. So. Um, we've learned from, from George and are able to go forward from, from there. And also one other tidbit we've added in there is that it will be reviewed every couple of years. So you're not looking at it once every 20 years. Um, so that way it helps keep all the information current. Any other questions on that? I won't get into the muck or the details. It's a little dry. And communications uh, committee, there isn't a report on here, um, but we do have um, somebody here tonight who was also here at our, our last meeting, um, the Frank Fulcherio from SEC TV. They're trying to increase access to Stonington education and uh, government. And so uh, some conversations with him and agreed that we'll bring some information to the communications committee and then uh, discuss that and then have um, sit down and have some discussions as far as some details with Frank and as far as maybe getting some of our activities and um, events uh, broadcasted. Any other comments on the policy subcommittee or teaching and learning? Any questions? Okay, building committee update. Lots going on. Lots going on. <laughs> so we had a building committee meeting this Tuesday night and we met again this morning. Um, and things are definitely moving along. It's coming down to the line. West Vine, both at West Vine and Dean's Mill, they're still working on the punch list, but they have told us they're much smaller, maybe about 12 items. Um, they are still trying to deal with the kitchen exhaust makeup air system, um, re-engineering that and or trying to work out the controls. Um, that's, again, still ongoing. It's getting close, but... Um, 
at West Vine, they are still working on small amounts of the landscaping, but it's almost ready to turn over the area A, the first part, to the district. Um, the sensory garden still needs some additional work, and we're going to be reaching out to the town to see if um, we can potentially get some help in paving the walkways to make them more handicap accessible. At Dean's Mill, they are getting ready to do some final paving in the next couple weeks, and hopefully they will be coordinating and communicating um, with the school <laughs> and not just showing up. But um, probably the biggest thing is we are going to have two open houses and ribbon cuttings in September on Saturday, September 21st, and Saturday, September 28th. These are going to be opportunities for the public, not just parents with kids that might be at the open, the school back to school nights to come in and see the schools and have a, you know, a tour of some select areas, some typical classrooms, gym, cafeteria. So we're planning those right now. Right now they're planned to be from 10 to 1130, both of those Saturday mornings, one at Dean's Mill, one at West Vine and invitations will come out to all of you and there'll be more information in the newspaper. Any questions on anything that's going on? Is, is there any way that um, for former students or college students can get into the buildings before they head back to school this fall? Um, potentially, I mean, I can't speak on that, but maybe Dr. Riley or Peter or someone, if they're over there, you know, maybe there's a way to, or Jen, whoever's. I know that we don't have anything planned right now for the building committee to be walking through, but maybe. <laughs> There's still a lot going on. Um, I think the best, probably the best thing to do would in, to invite them to these to these open houses in September, and then if they can't, if they're gone, when they come back, then we'll be complete. We won't have. Or I mean, you saw we have. Right paving and tractors and everything else going on. We can't even get into the building sometimes, so it. No, that makes sense. It, it, I'm just thinking maybe, and this can be for future communications mm -hmm. or something, agenda, but maybe we could offer something in January or sure. December when they're home for a longer time and school's still open. So that sure. it's a way to pull people back in and let them see. New Year's Eve? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Maybe we could have a video tour put online. Oh, that's a good idea. So maybe even when we do our open house, mm -hmm. if we film it and then put it online for people to look at. That's a good idea. Tim can add the music. Do we have any comments from citizens relative to board action on this agenda? Items for future agendas? There's an organization called Wait, to, Wait Till Eighth. And I don't know if you've heard about them, but the whole premise in their mission statement is around cell phone use uh, among young people. And in order for it to work, um, it really has to be like a school-wide, system-wide thing. And essentially, my understanding is that parents take a pledge to not give their kids a cell phone with data, with a data plan. They can have cell phones until the eighth grade. And it eliminates a lot of things, uh, potential bullying, um, you know, they're not obsessed with likes on Snapchat or whatever. I don't even know what Snapchat, I hear about it. <laughs> Instagram, but they're not obsessed with their phones. I mean, I can tell you, I just today, I, I hire high school kids, they're, they're wonderful, but it, it, I've just relinquished, it, they're, in their, they're on their phones all the time. It's like they can't, they, they can't survive without their phones. And I know that's a whole nother story, but I really think that, um, if kids started later, it might help. And it also would help, um, you know, just on many levels. So I thought if it's something that we could get behind, yeah. um, that it would be, we really would be helping out a lot of um, students along the way, I think, um, maybe getting their heads out of their phone and, 
and focusing on other things. So I don't know what everyone else feels about that, but. I think it's a great idea. Is there someone who would come and do a presentation on it or? Uh, I am happy to reach out. I just, I heard about it on a podcast. Sure. And I just Googled, you know, what their mission statement and that sure. kind of thing, but I haven't gone any further than that. Okay. So. That's a great idea. Oh yeah. What do you think of bringing it to teaching and learning committee? All right. And, oh, and then yeah. we can okay. care for it. How's that sound? Okay. I also think that um, that ties in with, I think at the retreat we're going to talk about the climate surveys. Yes? Correct? No? Okay. <laughs> you seem there. Yes. Okay. But um, it ties in with, there was a question about whether parents want more information about technology. Um, so that would be a good address. Great. <clears throat> but, I don't, but then that program sounds fantastic, but my, my reflex is to say, and, and we, I know we said policy, but my reflex is to say that sounds like something that we should ask the, the middle school team, um, including like the social workers, you know, who might be doing other stuff, might be doing other initiatives, just to see what, what's going on. It doesn't sound like there's anything going on, but um, I just don't know that that's something that the board just takes on, on our own. Right, which would be great if we brought it to teaching and learning, then we would would know that because they could be invited as well. I'd be proud of you. Sure. I think it's something great to look into and then maybe see how we how it gets carried out from, from there. Sure. I will be um, setting the agenda for the board goal meeting on August 21st. I hate to call it a retreat because I don't really view it as a true retreat. But um, so we will be, I, I think, the format we had last year worked, whereas we met, had some uh, grinders or salads, uh, started our discussions, and then we, at that time we had Marianne and Van there and helped work through our goals because then they heard what we wanted and then were able to develop their goals and apply them to the current district goals from there with, with us all interpreting it as intended. And then from there, they were able to leave, and then we were able to continue our discussions. So I, I think everyone was happy at the end of that evening. We served two purposes at, at once. So I think that that would be, it worked well. OK. Yep. And um, after our meeting on Monday, um, Mrs. Fanette and then Dr. Riley were able to speak to our Title IX attorney, and it, we are able to begin the process of discussing some items in regards to the t Title IX issues, and so we will be able to have them present those um, at the uh, on the 21st as well, so we can get started on, on some of those concerns, uh, how we bring the students in, how we include them in this process, and um, uh, discuss changes and upgrades and all of that. So we can start, we are able to start that process, which will be fabulous. Go ahead. Did you, oh, I thought you were, I thought you were moving your mic to talk. <laughs> are there any board comments or concerns? Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. <laughs>